Good day and welcome to another lecture series uh, on funding and financing. Today's topic will be venture capital funding, a breakdown. I am your presenter, Doyle Roberts, senior partner and co-founder of WilsonandRoberts.com and we're going to get right into venture capital financing and funding. Venture capital is typically provided by outside investors for financing of new, growing, or struggling businesses. Uh, venture capital investments generally are high-risk investments but offer the potential for above average returns and a percentage of ownership of the company. A venture capitalist or VC is a person who makes such investments. A venture capital fund is a pool investment vehicle, often a partnership that primarily invests the financial capital of third-party investors in enterprises that are too risky for the standard capital markets or bank loans. In terms of the history of venture capital funding, um, General George Doriot is considered to be the father of, venture, of the venture capital industry. In 1946, he founded the American Research and Development Corporation, ARD, whose biggest success was Digital Equipment Corporation. When Digital Equipment went public in 1968, it provided ARD with 101% annualized returns on investment. ARD, ARD's 70,000 US dollar investment in Digital Corporation in 1956 had a market value of 37 million uh, US dollars in 1968. Uh, the first venture backed startup is generally considered to be Fairchild Semi Semiconductor, funded in 1959 by Benrock Associates. Uh, prior to World War II, uh, venture capital investments were primarily the domain of uh, wealthy individuals and families. Uh, one of the first steps toward a professionally managed venture capital industry was the passage of the Small Business Investment Act of 1958. Uh, the 58 Act authorized the U.S. Small Business Administration, or the SBA, uh, to license private small business investment companies, or SBICs, to provide financing and management assistance to small entrepreneurial businesses in the United States. Passage of the Act addressed concerns raised in the <clears throat> excuse me in a Federal Reserve Board report to Congress that concluded that a major gap existed in the capital markets for long-term funding for growth-oriented small businesses. The goal of the SBIC program was and still is to stimulate the U.S. economy in general and small businesses in particular by facilitating the flow of capital to pioneering small concerns. Venture capital is a phenomenon uh, most closely associated with the US and technologically innovative uh, and its technologically innovative ventures. Uh, due to structural restrictions imposed on American banks in the 1930s, there was no private merchant banking industry in the United States, a situation that was quite unique in developed nations. As late as the 1980s, Les the Thorough, a noted economist, decried the inability of the U United States financial regulation framework to support any merchant bank other than one that is run by the United States Congress in the form of a federally funded project funded projects. Uh, these he argued were massive in scale but also politically motivated to focus on defense, housing and such specialized technologies as space exploration, agriculture and aerospace. US investment banks were confined to uh, handling large merger and acquisition transactions. Uh, the issue of equity and debt securities and often the breakup of industrial concerns to access the pension fund surplus or sell off infrastructural capital for big gains was always a, a concern that was not eradicated in the earlier days. Um, other than criticizing the uh, regulation of the early earlier days with with funding, um, we find that um, many nations globally became dependent on central banks 
an elite academic um, and rather than the more populist and consumerist way than uh, priorities were set by governments and private investors in the US. A model that proved to have some advantages when the public's attention was strongly activated by the successful IPO of Netscape and other internet related firms. Uh, this highlighted the nearly invisible role that Silicon Valley had played in the sustaining of American economic innovation. However, um, in terms of venture capital, um, it was due to uh, the dot-com boom, um, uh, the late 1990s, where a boom time for globally renowned VC firms on Sand Hill Road in San Francisco, in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, that the vernacular, the term venture capital funding started to come into the arena of the average everyday individual. At that time, IPOs were taking, um, uh, some would say, rational leaps and access to friends and family shares was becoming a major determiner of who would benefit from any such IPO. Um, the ordinary investor rarely got a chance to invest at the strike price uh, in this particular period of investments. In terms of uh, the NASDAQ crash and technology slump that started in March 2000, uh, that marked the end of the uh, dot-com boom uh, and the resulting catastrophic losses on overhauled non-performing startups. Uh, this shook VC funds deeply um, and by 2003 many venture capitalists were focused on writing off companies they funded just a few years earlier and many funds were underwater that is uh, the market value of their portfolio companies were less than the invested value. Uh, venture capital investors sought to reduce the large commitments uh, they had made to venture capital funds and as of mid uh, say 2003 the conventional wisdom was that the venture capital industry would shrink uh, but as we see in, in looking back this did not happen. Uh, the revival of an internet driven environment uh, thanks to deals such as eBay's purchase of Skype uh, the news corporation's purchase of uh, MySpace uh, and the successful uh, Google IPO, it has helped to basically revive the venture capital environment. Uh, what we found is uh, U.S. firms have traditionally been the biggest participants in venture deals, but now what we have is our non-U.S. venture uh, investment is growing. Uh, Europe has a large and growing number of active venture uh, capital firms. Uh, capital raised in the region in, uh, for instance, 2005, including buyout funds, exceeded 60 billion uh, euros, uh, of which 12.6 billion euros was specifically for venture investment. Uh, the European Venture Capital Association, uh, which, which can be looked at on uh, the website evca.com, the website again is evca.com, um, started to basically cement and ferment uh, cohesiveness in, in the European countries and now what we have is basically most of the major European countries have their own uh, uh, venture capital uh, networks uh, which can be monitored through groups such as EBAN um, uh, and but a lot of them have their links especially those uh, in Canada to United uh, American companies. Um, the investment of venture capitalists in Indian industries in the first half of uh, 2006 uh, was $3 billion and is expected to reach $6 billion uh, at the end of the year, uh, at the end of 2007, sorry. In China, uh, venture funding more than doubled uh, from $420 million in 2002 to almost $1 billion in 2003. Uh, for the first half of 2004, venture capital investment rose 32% from 2003. Uh, by 2005, led by a wave of successful IPOs on the NASDAQ and revised government regulation, uh, China dedicated funds uh, raised US uh, uh, 4 billion in, in committed capital. In terms, in terms of that basically detailing the history of, of the venture capital funding um, to this point, in terms of um, what has been going on. In terms of a more recent uh, 
interest in, in venture capital and private equity, uh, what we found is is the election campaign uh, between uh, President Barack Obama and Governor Mitt Romney uh, brought to the forefront uh, uh, companies like Bain Capital and, and the Carlyle Group and and other private equity firms started to uh, come from the back, backdrop into the foreground, so to speak. But not many individuals have an idea or, or understand what exactly venture capital firms or, or private equity firms do or how they go about helping you as, as an entrepreneur uh, to uh, receive money and funding and to basically move your company uh, into it, its its various rounds of, of, of financing. Um, what we find in terms of the general landscape, venture capitalists force the growth in companies uh, through their involvement in the management, strategic marketing, and planning of the companies they fund. Uh, they, they are entrepreneurs first and finances second. Um, in terms of their responsibilities, uh, venture capitalists generally uh, one, would finance new and rapidly growing companies. Two, they purchase equity securities. Three, they assist in the development of new products and services. Uh, four, uh, they take higher risks with the expectation of higher rewards. Uh, five, uh, they carefully screen the technical and business merits of, of the proposed company uh, presented to them. Uh, Six, uh, they invest in a small percentage of the businesses they review. Uh, seven, they have a long-term perspective. And in terms of, in terms of, of what they look for, next they also uh, work closely with uh, their their various companies. Um, they actively work with the company's management by contributing to their experience and business savvy. <clears throat> gain from helping other companies with similar growth challenges. Uh, venture capitalists also mitigate the risk of venture investing by developing a portfolio of young companies in a single venture fund. Uh, often uh, they co-invest with other professional venture capital firms and while managing multiple funds uh, simultaneously. Uh, what we find is that most mainstream venture capital firms invest their capital through funds organized as limited partnerships in which the venture capital firm serves as the general partner. Uh, in terms of private independent firms, uh, these are the most common and have no affiliations with any other financial in institutions. Uh, some firms often, <coughs> excuse me, some firms often succeed by creating synergies between the various companies they have invested in. For example, uh, one company that has had a great software product but does not have uh, adequate distribution technology may be paired with another company or its management in the venture portfolio that has better distribution technology. Uh, venture firms may also be affiliates or subsidiaries of a commercial bank, uh, investment bank, or insurance company and make investments on behalf of outside investors or the parent firm's clients. Uh, still, other firms may be subsidiaries of non-financial industrial corporations uh, making investments on behalf of the parent itself. Uh, these latter firms are typically, typically called uh, direct investors or corporate venture investors. The venture capital firm uh, will organize its uh, partnership as a pool fund, that is a, a fund made up of the general partner and the investors or limited partners. Uh, these funds are typically organized as fixed life partnerships, usually having a life of uh, 10 years on average. Um, each fund is capitalized by commitments of capital from the limited partners. Uh, once the partnership has reached its target size, uh, the partnership is closed to further investment from new investors or even existing investors, so the fund has a fixed capital pool from which to make its investments. In terms of multiple funds, um, like a mutual fund company, a venture capital firm uh, may have more than one fund. Um, let me break that down a little for you. Uh, 
a venture firm may raise another fund a few years after closing the first fund in order to continue to invest in companies and to provide more opportunities for existing and new investors. Uh, it is not uncommon to see a successful firm raise six or seven funds consecutively over the span of uh, 10 to 15 years. Uh, each fund is managed separately and has its own investors or limited partners and its own general partner. Uh, these funds' uh, investment strategy may be similar to other funds in the firm. However, the firm may have one fund with a specific focus and another with a different focus and yet another with a broadly diversified portfolio. Uh, this depends on the strategy and focus of the venture firm itself. An institutional investor allocates uh, between 2 to 3 percent of the institutional portfolio for investment in alternative assets such as uh, private equity or venture capital as part of, of the overall asset allocation. Uh, currently, over 50 percent of investments in venture capital or private equity comes from institutional uh, public and private pension funds. Uh, with the balance coming from endowments, foundations, insurance companies, uh, banks, individuals, and other entities who seek to diversify their portfolio with this investment class. In terms of the investment focus of venture capital firms, uh, depending on their investment strategy, uh, venture capitalists may be generalists, uh, investing in various industry sectors, sectors, geographic locations, or stages of a company's life. Uh, they may be specialists in one or two industry sectors, or may seek to invest in only a localized geographic area. Uh, others would focus uh, in terms of uh, uh, they would invest before there is a real product or company organized, uh, so-called seed investing. Others provide capital to start up to start up a company in its first or second stages of development, known as early stage investing. Uh, others invest in a company throughout the company's life cycle, and therefore, some funds focus on later stage investing by providing financing to help a company grow beyond a critical mass to become more successful. Uh, this is known as expansion stage financing. Uh, other VCs uh, specialize in the acquisition, uh, turnaround, or recapitalization of public and private companies that represent favorable investment opportunities. In terms of the period of the investment, uh, an early stage investment may take seven to ten years to mature while a later stage investment may only take a few years. Uh, so the, the appetite for the investment life cycle must be congruent with the limited partnerships appetite for liquidity. Uh, the venture investment is neither a short term nor a liquid investment, but an investment that must be made with uh, careful diligence and expertise. Uh, one form of investing that was popular in the 1980s and has caught on again is corporate venturing. Uh, this is usually called direct investing in portfolio companies by venture capital programs or subsidiaries of non-financial corporations. Uh, these investment vehicles seek to find qualified investment opportunities that are congruent with the parent company's strategic technology or that provide synergy or cost savings. Uh, corporate venture programs usually invest their parents' capital while other venture investment vehicles invest outside investors' capital. Some uh, venture firms specialize in advising, consulting, and managing a corporation's venturing program. <clears throat> and the process that venture firms go through in seeking investment commitments from investors, uh, in case you didn't know, is typically called uh, fundraising uh, for, the not, for the newbie. Uh, this should not be confused with the actual investment in portfolio companies by the venture capital firms, uh, which is also sometimes called fundraising. Uh, the commitments of capital are raised from the investors during the formation of the fund. Um, a venture firm uh, will set out uh, prospecting for investors with a target fund size. Uh, it will distribute uh, a prospectus to potential investors and may take from several weeks to several months to raise the requisite capital. Uh, the fund will seek commitments of capital from institutional investors, endowments, foundations, and individuals who seek to invest part of their portfolio in opportunities with a, with a higher risk factor and commensurate opportunity for higher returns. Uh, the venture fund will also have uh, from a few 
to almost 100 limited partners, uh, depending on the target size of the fund. Uh, once the firm has raised enough commitments, it will start making investments in portfolio companies. Um, some limited partner investors um, may have n neither the resources nor the expertise to manage and invest in many funds and thus may seek to delegate this decision to an investment advisor or a so-called gatekeeper. Uh, this advisor will pool the assets of its various clients and invest these proceeds as a limited partner into a venture or buyout fund currently raising capital. Uh, alternatively, an investor may invest in a fund of funds, uh, which is a partnership organized to invest in other partnerships, uh, thus providing the limited partner investor with added diversification and the ability to invest smaller amounts in a variety of funds. <clears throat> the investment by venture funds or venture capital funds in portfolio companies is called disbursement. A portfolio company may, re may receive one round or in many cases several rounds of venture financing in its life as needed. A venture firm may make these disbursements on its own or in many cases will co-invest in a company with other venture capital firms. Uh, co-investment or syndication deal as this is also known as. Uh, this syndication provides more capital resources for the company. Um, firms co-invest because the company investment is congruent with the investment strategies of various venture firms and each firm will bring some competitive advantage uh, to the investment. A venture firm may not invest all of its committed capital but will reserve some capital for later investment in some of its uh, successful companies with additional capital needs. Often a venture capitalist may act as the leading investor, investing only a part of the money that you need. Um, you may have to syndicate the rest. Uh, the leading investor may go with you uh, to other venture firms or may meet with a group of them to help sell your idea or may merely act as the first investor to commit funds. Uh, investment bankers are paid 5 to 10 percent for putting together a syndication of venture capital firms to invest in a small business. Uh, if the venture firm acts as a principal and a syndicate, uh, the fee may be 2 to 3 percent of the money raised through other venture firms. Sometimes the principal venture uh, firm may share part of the fee with the other venture firms that are investing. Depending on the investment focus, the strategy of the venture firm, it will seek to uh, exit the investment in the portfolio company within a time frame of three to five years of the initial investment. Um, in terms of the exit, um, the initial public offering or the IPO is the most glamorous and visible type of exit uh, for venture investment. At public offerings, the venture firm is considered an insider and will receive stock in the company. Uh, but the firm is regulated and restricted in how that stock can be sold or liquidated for several years. Uh, once this stock is freely tradable, uh, usually after about two years, the venture fund will distribute the stock or cash to its limited partner, investor, who may then manage the public stock as a regular stock holding or may liquidate it upon receipt. In terms of mergers and acquisitions, uh, mergers and acquisitions by the original founders or another company represent the most common type of successful exit for venture capital investments. Uh, the venture capital firm receives stock or cash from the acquiring company and the venture investor distributes the proceeds from the sale to its limited partners. Uh, similar or like a mutual fund, uh, each venture fund um, has a net asset value or the value of an investor's holdings in that fund at any given time. Uh, this value is not determined by a public market transaction but through a valuation of the underlying portfolio. Uh, remember um, that the investment is, is illiquid and at any point uh, the partnership may have both private companies and the stock of public companies in its portfolio. Uh, these public stocks are usually subject to restrictions for a holding period and are thus subject to a liquidity discount in the portfolio valuation. Each company is valued at an agreed upon value between the venture firms, 
when invested in by the venture fund or funds. In subsequent quarters, uh, the venture investor will usually keep this valuation intact until, until a material event occurs to change the value. Uh, venture capital investors try to uh, conservatively value their investments using uh, guidelines or standard industry practices and by terms outlined in the prospectus of the fund itself. Uh, early stage funds may have an even more conservative valuation of their companies uh, due to the long life of their investments when compared to other funds with shorter investment cycles. As an investment manager, the general partner will typically charge a management fee to cover the cost of managing the committed capital. Uh, the fee will usually be paid quarterly for the life of the fund or it may be uh, tapered out or tapered or curtail, curtail, curtailed in the later stages of a fund's life. Uh, this is this is most often negotiated with investors upon formation of the fund in the terms and conditions of the investment. Uh, carried interest is the term used uh, to donate the profit split of proceeds to the general partner. Uh, it is the general partner's fee for carrying out the managerial responsibility uh, plus all the liability and for providing the needed expertise uh, to successfully manage the investment fund. Uh, there are as many variations of this uh, profit split, both in size and how it is uh, calculated and acquired, as they are firms. In terms of what uh, venture capital firms uh, and private equity investors look for, uh, in terms of what they when when they're looking to invest uh, funds. Uh, the first thing they look for is, is the management team. Uh, when considering an investment opportunity, uh, most venture capitalists uh, look at the obvious trends and market niches, um, transcending the business elements. However, the most important factor in a decision to invest in a company is the quality of the people. Uh, the venture capital axiom is simply this, and I quote, people, people, people. Um, In terms of, um, in total, there are five uh, major characteristics uh, that venture capitalists uh, look for in entrepreneurs uh, to decide whether or not they're uh, gonna gonna invest in that particular company or project. Um, the first would be uh, leadership. Uh, it's often assumed that entrepreneurs are born leaders, but that's not necessarily true. Sometimes it takes years to acquire the quality and sometimes it never surfaces. So whoever is at the helm of, of, of the business has to be a, 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 a gifted uh, director who can take the company to the various stages of funding and to the various stages of, of uh, profit proliferation that is the main goal and object of the entity. Uh, the next uh, quality that they look for in the entrepreneur is that of vision. Uh, vision doesn't come easily or magically. It comes from hard work, uh, Thomas Edison once said. Uh, he once, Thomas Edison once said, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. Um, the next, the third quality that uh, venture capitalists look for is integrity. Unlike leadership and vision, this quality is nearly impossible to assess on first impression. But after six months of working closely with an entrepreneur, Integrity or the lack of it becomes apparent. Uh, judging an entrepreneur's integrity is crucial. The entrepreneur must tread a fine line between being honest and creating so many problems that everyone's enthusiasm is dampened. Uh, the venture capitalist must have a keen sense of where this uh, fine line is drawn to anticipate problems and not overreact to the entrepreneur's concerns. Openness is another factor. Uh, that entrepreneurs would need to possess. Openness is the surest path to building a true partnership. Uh, most entrepreneurs are continuous, continuously taking inputs from everyone around them. Uh, they are constantly reevaluating their own positions, uh, questioning their own assumptions, and becoming their own management consultants. It's essential not to confuse uh, openness with flexibility. Uh, sometimes flexibility is insecurity in disguise. Uh, just as relying on a plan that depends solely on a venture capitalist's uh, vision is a major error. 
so too is investing in a management team that depends too much on the advice of its own board or its venture capitalists. Dedication is the next uh, trait that is, 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 is looked for. Uh, much has been uh, written about the classic traits of entrepreneurs, uh, some are st stubbornness, dedication, and the pursuit of a goal despite adversity. The key is to combine the traits our venture capitalists look for within the management team and if they are not there at the time of the initial investment, add them as the business moves forward, add them as the business grows. <clears throat> Excuse me. To help you in your business venture, uh, tap into the cash flow. Um, these are some of the strategies you may want to use uh, to ensure a yes from venture capitalists. Uh, the first one would be to aim for large markets or big markets. Uh, someone who's going to invest, who's about to invest a half a million dollars uh, with you, would prefer to have that money work towards capturing a share of a, of, a, of a 25 billion market rather than a share of a hundred million dollar market. So dream big, expand your vision, expo expand your, your thinking. Uh, the next thing. Uh, is they're looking for commitment. Uh, uh, pitch to the funds, uh, venture capital uh, capitalists that are interested in your product and service. Uh, not all funds invest in early stage capital. Uh, the majority don't. Uh, so even if your idea is a good one, it won't matter much if you try to get late stage specialists to look at your proposal. Uh, usually they, they won't. Uh, special funds are often set up to make investments in e-commerce tools or applications or capture opportunities in broadband content development. Uh, you must know who you're talking to in terms of your interaction with venture capitalists. Uh, one of the most important aspects of accepting venture capital money is the particular venture capitalist you are going to work with. Uh, deal at the top. Involving the CEOs of both the strategic partner and the startup uh, many venture capitalists will tell you that strategic alliances need acceptance from the entire organization and this usually starts at the top. Uh, this is what is often meant by value added. <clears throat> in terms of the contacts in the industry or the right contacts, these are vital. Uh, your venture capitalist should be someone with the right contacts for your product and your service. Uh, they should make strategic alliances for you and help you to recruit good management people. Uh, they can advise you best because uh, they know the area you want to conquer and this would make your pathway a whole lot easier. In terms of, of, of forecasting future events, you would make realistic assumptions. Demonstrate that you have a firm understanding of the marketplace. Use your efforts to show that you can segment your market and provide something attractive in it. Uh, you must also provide clear milestones. Uh, this includes what you have already done and what you intend to do. If it will take six months to complete a portion of your plan, don't claim that it will take only three months. It is best to set up realistic expectations at the beginning. Besides, uh, venture capitalists often have a good idea of how long things take because they work with lots of different companies every day and usually more than you, you will. Um, you cannot shy away from your weaknesses. Address your weaknesses. Uh, they will show up sooner or later, no matter what you do. Uh, usually proclaiming that no loopholes exist with you uh, will do you no good. Uh, you can't get help if you don't ask for it. Uh, let the venture capitalist know where he or she can provide you with the, with the most assistance. Uh, this may even create a stronger bond between the two of you. Uh, I can't stress this enough. Don't exaggerate. Don't mess up things with a lot of self-serving sentences such as, we will be the best, the most creative, the most awesome content generator ever to hit the world wide web. Come on, you got to be real in this thing. Uh, you must be buzzword compliant. Uh, don't confuse the internet with the world wide web. Hits with visits. Don't say click through rates unless you mean advertising. State why you're different. State what is it exactly that makes your proposal stand out from the crowd. Be concise. Explain why why, why, what you're doing hasn't been done before or why the previous execution didn't meet with success. What have you got that will work? Why will it work? Reveal the strengths of your team. 
explain the team members will bring to the enter what what team members will bring to the enterprise put forth their professional and perhaps personal achievements and interests and be specific in presenting their skills you have to justify your target customers it's not enough to just say everyone will want this or if we build it they will come try to provide a strong rationale for why people will want to use your product or service and how it will benefit them spell it out for the venture capitalist and you will improve your chances of getting funded keep it simple or where I come from they say kiss keep it simple stupid uh, don't overcomplicate things as it can put you in trouble here's an example of how to keep it simple the objective of our website is to make it easier for existing and future customers to do business with us by providing them with information and services to grow their business nothing more needs to be said five reasons why your business needs an executive summary and why venture capitalists more so than your business need it venture capitalists to put it bluntly are busy Venture capitalists uh, specialize in being very busy people. Imagine getting, say, 500 to 1,000 email messages a day, receiving three uh, business plans or ev almost every hour on the hour, and having to monitor five to six companies in an investment portfolio all at once. Imagine having only 10 or 12 years to receive your return on an investment portfolio after you've put $50 million into it. And imagine being concerned about all of this at the same time. This is the reason why you need a great executive summary. Because the person who is that busy and is that caught up in so many things, you must be able to get and capture their attention. In terms of the executive summary that you're going to be presenting to your venture capitalists, a well-crafted executive summary of say two to three pages has become an operative uh, device in terms of the venture capital community in terms of interacting uh, in terms of introductions and presentation and assessment of a business and its potential to be invested in uh, without this uh, document one is hardly prepared to explain a business but to create a new business, one must anticipate explaining it many times to investors, partners, employees, and customers. Uh, you must come to a place uh, where you must merge technology with your vision. An executive summary often needs to unite a technological and business vision. Uh, this requires a broad, broad mastery of differing types of concepts. Uh, and the reason for this is you have to crystallize your concept. A brilliant executive summary represents a crystallization of your business plan or concept. Uh, this short document of two to three pages says everything about your business. It serves as an outline of a business plan and as a con consolidation of a business, business, business model. Uh, while businesses must develop their business plans and then concisely present themselves with an executive summary, a summary can also serve those who are in the process of developing their business plan and business model. An executive summary is a beautiful tool uh, uh, which the executive management of a business can rely upon as, as, as a touchstone uh, of its uh, ongoing track along the path of business. Uh, to review the executive summary every four, every quarter and check the development of the business against it would not be uh, wrong to introduce in terms of your, your standard operating procedures. Uh, if the vision of the business has shifted, a reconceptualization or adjustment is due. Uh, for most venture capitalists, the business proposal is the turning point in the decision to go forward, uh, to invest time and energy in trying to analyze the situation and to work out a deal with the entrepreneur. Uh, it must suggest how the venture capitalists uh, and you can both make money, besides helping you to sell your company to an investor. Uh, your objective should be to create a business proposal that will lead to a meeting between you and the venture capitalists. Uh, many consultants and financial brokers prepare business proposals. Uh, this 
business proposals prepared by these persons uh, are known by their genetic name or packages. Uh, if you don't know how to do these things yourself and you need to hire a specialist. Um, brokers, in terms of putting together your investment packages, brokers usually charge a great deal of, uh, of money to assemble your packages. Uh, most financial brokers uh, merely send out uh, sketchy information uh, supplied to them by you, the entrepreneur. Uh, this usually ensures that the venture capital management will turn down the proposal without really giving it any substantive review. Uh, the reason a financial broker cannot prepare an effective business proposal is simple. He rarely knows um, uh, he rarely knows your business as well as you do. Uh, he cannot write a proposal without your help. Uh, uh, so it would be prudent to have your banker, accountant, and friends review the proposal uh, after you've had a specialist prepared. Uh, they may be able to suggest another point of view for you to consider. Uh, the most important quality of your business proposal is succinctness. Uh, get straight to the point. A business proposal that is longer than 30 pages, excluding the financial exhibits, is probably too long. Uh, for your proposal to be ahead of the pack, it should eliminate as much work as possible for the venture capitalist. Uh, don't include uh, fraudulent or misleading information in your proposal. Uh, uh, if you fail to disclose a material item, the venture capitalist uh, may be able to demand all of his money back. Or worse, if the business fails, uh, he could have a legal basis to sue you personally. So be forthright and be truthful. Uh, keep in mind now, you're trying to convince uh, a venture capitalist firm that you have the potential to be a market leader. Uh, you cannot fantasize, uh, but you can't be timid either. Uh, you've got to be bold. You've got to be. You've got to be tenacious, as some would say, as tenacious as a pit bull. Um, you have to look for a viable partner. Many VC firms are like leading and are participating in reasonably sized syndicates. But if you need to raise $50 million, not all venture capital firms are going to be a viable partner. You may be better off with investment bankers or seeking a venture capital firm that suits your needs. Um, most venture capitalists are willing to sign a reasonable non-disclosure agreement with you uh, when they reach a point of mutual interest. However, if you present a venture capitalist firm with a non-disclosure agreement in your first meeting, it will probably be tossed in the trash bin. Uh, mutual trust is a part of the business, so you're going to have to time it just right. Um, business plans as well need to be convincing. They don't have to be pretty. Unless you're building a color printer, don't waste your funds on color printing. And unless you're plotting three dimensions, uh, uh, dimensional data, don't print 3D graphs. Um, you cannot ignore your competition. Uh, when you're talking to your, your, your possible funding sources about your, your outlook. Uh, you will be your worst enemy if you overlook competitors. Um, uh, Guy Ka Kawasaki once said, uh, the perfect market has no established competitors. Uh, it's growing at 50% a year, and there are high barriers to entry for everyone but you. Wake up and smell the silicone. There are no such markets, end quote. You must be convincing. Most of the smart people in the world don't work for you. Explain how you're going to win in spite of that. Uh, markets tend to shake out into about a 50% player, a 30% player, and a lot of little companies who don't make any money. Convince the venture capitalists you're going to be one of the first two. You have to be focused. Technical risk is a big part of the venture capital business. Market risk is not. That means venture capitalists are, are, are quite willing to invest in a better mousetrap if you can prove there is a vibrant and growing uh, uh, market for mousetraps. Uh, betting that a particular market is bound to emerge soon has been the epithet of many high-tech companies. 
If your business plan is based on a window of opportunity, the VC firm is going to get nervous. If your development slips a bit and the window closes a bit early, is there any market left? The thing is, thousands of proposals are buying for venture capitalist money. This is something you need to keep in mind. The thing is, the packaging can draw the venture capitalist into your proposal. You might write a great venture, a uh, great business proposal, but if its physical appearance is sloppy, it might not be picked up by the venture capitalist for weeks. And when it is picked up, poor packaging might make him turn down the business proposal without even reviewing it in any detail. Uh, do not send an original to the venture capitalist. That's another thing. You should have crisp, plain copies, preferably on white paper with margins wide enough for the venture capitalist to make notes. A margin of one inch on all sides is the standard. The copy paper you use should be of high quality and it should not be the old variety that has an oily touch and a foul smell. It should provide a crisp, clean imprint on every page. Colored paper is optional. It does not impress most venture capitalists, but it might appeal to a few. You can copy on the back and the front or just on the front of each page. Um, in terms of style of type, you should not use an unusual style of type such as uh, a script. Uh, a type that is easy to read is essential if people are, are to process your business proposal quickly. The type should be dark and sharp in, uh, in the original and in the copies. Uh, submitting handwritten items is forbidden. I'll say that again. Submitting handwritten items is forbidden unless it is absolutely necessary. Uh, generally speaking, graphs are fine if they are on of high quality, but are usually not essential in a business proposal. Bar graphs of sales are not as effective as numbers. Uh, pictures of the product or, or, or literature on the product should be attached to the business proposal in order to give the venture capitalist a better idea of the subject. But such material should be of good quality. Uh, you should also uh, copy articles carefully in order to make sure the copies are of good quality if, if your company is being uh, mentioned in, in a particular newspaper article. Uh, poor copies of newspaper articles will not invite the venture capitalist to read those articles. Uh, generally, articles are not recommended as part of your proposal. In terms of the cover of your proposal, if possible, the cover on your proposal should be an attractive color. Also, the cover sheet should be of a heavy paper so that your proposal will stand out from all the others sitting on the venture capitalist desk. Uh, perhaps a bright yellow page with your logo in the middle and name at the bottom would invite the venture capitalist to pick it up and read it immediately. Uh, once he opens it up, of course, the summary sheet should grab his attention and draw him to the proposal. Uh, you might wish to use a picture of the product on the first page in order to attract attention. Again, you are selling, so make sure your product's package catches the eye of the venture capitalist. In terms of the binding, uh, there are many ways of binding business proposals today. A staple probably will not hold your business proposal together. If an ordinary staple will hold it together, it is probably not long enough. Certain heavy gauge staples are acceptable, of course. If such a staple is not available, you have three options. You can use a three ring binder, have the proposal professionally bound, or put a large clip on it so that the venture capitalist can take the clip off and turn the pages. Of the three options, most venture capitalists prefer professionally bound proposal. A large clip is the second choice. Three ring binders are the least preferred because they are almost impossible to store. Uh, this, in terms of the summary, uh, the summary should be the first item a venture capitalist sees. It gives the venture capitalist an initial impression of you and your proposal. It should be typed perfectly and presented clearly. Uh, this section covers a number of key topics that will help the venture capitalist understand your business. Uh, throughout this section, there must be there must be a general, if not specific, attempt to show how your business is unique. Uh, while reading uh, this section, the venture capitalist will try to determine the keys to success in your area of work. Generally speaking, begin with the paragraph that starts with the sentence, the company's principal offices are located and put in the address, the telephone number, and the individual who should be contacted. 
uh, the nature in terms of the nature of the business uh, give a general synopsis of the business you are in for example you might say uh, the company designs manufactured markets and services uh, computer software control uh, uh, equipment for use in hospitals um, describe the product or service in general terms you want to make sure the venture capitalist understands your product or service in as few words as possible in terms of your business history state when the company was incorporated specify when it introduced its first product or service and list the most important milestones with dates through which the company has passed already uh, the business history section of the report must be brief and to the point uh, if it is more than a page or at the most two pages you have included too many historical uh, uh, points uh, there may be a special reason for including a long historical section if the company has had a colorful past but by all means be brief uh, the venture capitalist will talk to you about the business history section in order to understand your business at that time you can go into many details <clears throat> Uh, spell out in a chronological sequence the plan for the company and indicate critical milestones. In essence, the venture capitalists want to know how you plan to move from where you are today to where you intend to be in five years. Uh, the form of this section of the proposal is open to a great deal of freedom, even though it must be brief. Uh, you may simply state that you intend to continue producing your basic products for the next five years and that in the year and in year three you will introduce another similar product in that case your business of the future would be brief and to the point on the other hand if you expect to go through innumerable changes before you reach your final point of stability you should indicate what changes would take place um, the venture capitalist wants to know precisely what the company will have to do to be a success every business proposition to a venture capitalist should have some unique property um, is the management team unique is the product or service unique is the production process unique is the is is it based on unique financing all these items could be included uh, the important point is that something should make your company stand out from all the other investment opportunities available to the venture capitalist our venture capitalists do not like to invest in me too companies uh, they want a company that has a unique business proposition business position uh, in a separate section such as this or in a various sections throughout the business plan you should stress the uniqueness of your company if your business involves a new product a patent on a on a process or some other particularly unusual feature then it should be covered in a separate section such as uh, besides including this section, uh, the entrepreneur should interface, interlace, sorry, the business proposals with the strengths of the company. Describe the product or service precisely. In terms that will leave no doubt in the mind of the reader as to what you produce or plan to produce. If you have several products or services, describe each in a separate paragraph. You should describe the price of the product how the price was determined and the amount of the gross product profit uh, entrepreneurs tend to treat the pricing of their products too hastily uh, make sure that you explain in straightforward logical terms the rationale behind the pricing uh, is your products price governed by its competitors is it price high because you can get away with it uh, you must be prepared to answer these questions um, you have to describe in detail the customers of the product who uses it what they use it for and why they buy your product or service uh, do they buy your product because of the prices uh, price alone or are there other considerations what need of the customer does the product or service satisfy um, in terms of uh, the industry or market here you should uh, describe the general marketplace for your product, uh, the total amount, the total money value, the rate uh, it has grown, and the overall demand for this product and service. A projection for the future size of the, of, 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 of the marketplace is necessary. You may use uh, uh, tabular formats uh, in terms of uh, uh, 
We're looking at the years, prior year, actual, last year, actual, this year projected, next year projected, two year projected, and in terms of looking at industry sales and the percentage of increase or decrease. Uh, don't fall into the trap of stating industry sales uh, for the entire marketplace when in effect your product will be sold to only a very small part of that industry. In terms of the competition section or competition factor, uh, describe all the competing products and the various companies that produce them. Uh, pay particular attention to the, to the money value that, that, that they are selling, uh, the percentage of the market that they have and the financial strength of the company that is your competitor. Uh, you should also describe precisely how your product is different from their products. Uh, if you have no competition, then describe why you do not have competition. Plain and simple. A reason for no competition might be your, your patent position. Uh, if you think there might be competition in the future, then you should indicate each probable competitor and when he might enter the market. Uh, most entrepreneurs do not know enough about their competition. A venture capitalist will be leery of your an analysis if you do not understand your competition. Be aware too that most venture capitalists believe every product has some type of competition, no matter what the product is. In terms of your marketing, uh, this section uh, must contain information about your marketing process and the channels of distribution vis-a-vis -vis, uh, one how does the product leave your plant and arrive in the hands of the ultimate user two will you have a direct sales force or use distributors three what brokers or intermediaries are involved in selling your product four what is the relationship of your company to these in intermediaries uh, five any special arrangements you have entered into in order to market your product um, most venture capitalists are, po are really poor market analyzers. Uh, they, fancy, they, they, they fancy or see themselves as marketing men, but they are not. In explaining the marketing of your product, you will have to take one step at a time so that they can understand the marketing process. If you are marketing to the government almost exclusively, most venture capitalists will be nervous because your company will be subject to the whims of government, governmental appropriations and approvals. Uh, you will need a convincing explanation to overcome the objections to the marketing of most of your products to the government. Uh, further, if you have just one buyer, it may be difficult for the venture capitalist to accept your marketing dependence on one customer because the risks are simply too high. In your, in, your, in your proposal to venture capitalists, you must describe all stages of the production process and whatever affects production. A key point here is production cost. How did you arrive at the cost of goods sold? Um, in terms of the production characteristics, uh, this section should focus on the production characteristics. That is one, is it a difficult or sophisticated production process? Two, are there many components or just a few? Three, how, many value do, how much value does the company actually add to the product? Four, how much is purchased in sub-assembly format? Five, what components are crucial to the production process? Six, is it a standard production uh, process or does it have many difficult tasks? Uh, seven, if it is a com complicated process, will people with special skills be needed to carry it out? In terms of your suppliers, uh, you must describe the companies that supply your company with raw materials or other necessary items. At this point of the proposal, you need to list, uh, to list the three or four top suppliers and the items they supply to you. Uh, in terms of subcontractors, if subcontractors or other people complete uh, part of the work in bringing the product to the marketplace, describe them and the relationship with them. Uh, list several of the subcontractors and, and the money value of, of work you are contracting with them. Later you will need to supply the venture capitalist with a complete list of subcontractors, names, addresses, telephone numbers, and volume so that the venture capitalist can contact these subcontractors in their due diligence process. Uh, you, in terms of the backlog, you must indicate the amount of backlog outstanding for the company's products. Uh, list the items requested and the size of the order. Uh, you can also give the venture capitalist a good idea of the backlog by listing the top three or four customers and their backlog of orders.
uh, later on in your meetings uh, with venture capitalists, you should show him uh, or her a complete list of the backlog so he can see where the orders are coming from and who purchases the product. Uh, describe the, the real estate that the company owns or the lease that it has for its offices and plant, uh, the size of the plant in square feet and the price per square foot, uh, the equipment that you have or intend to buy, uh, the fixed assets in detail. Uh, the venture capitalists want to know that the plant is sufficient to take care of the growth of the company. If you will have to move out of the plant in a year, the company will have difficulty continuing to expand at a rapid rate. Uh, some venture capitalists don't like to invest in companies that have to move within a short period of time. Um, the reason for this is because they believe uh, such moves are disruptive and destroy the company's growth. In terms of your equipment, uh, describe in some detail the equipment that you have or intend to buy. Uh, give a general idea of the fixed assets and their value resale. Uh, describe the total uh, dollar value and number of units that you can produce using the existing equipment. Uh, identify any long lead time in acquiring machinery. In this section, the venture capitalist wants to know if your equipment is difficult to obtain. If it is and you reach capacity, the company will have to wait a long period of time before it can acquire additional equipment in order to increase capacity. Specify if the equipment is complicated and requires a special skill to operate. If so, you will need a special workforce order to operate the machines. The question is, how difficult is, is it to find such special employee to operate the machine? Uh, finally, uh, if the machinery is used for a special purpose, it will be difficult to sell. Therefore, its collateral value is much less. All these points are important to the venture capitalists. <clears throat> In terms of utilities, uh, describe availability of a reliable source of electricity, water, uh, communication uh, facilities like the internet and, and things of that nature, road access to the factory and offices and other facilities. Uh, here you should indicate the amount of money being spent on research and development, uh, the amount that has been spent in the past and the amount that you intend to spend in the future. Uh, you should describe precisely what you intend to accomplish with the funds spent on research and development. It is every venture capitalist's nightmare um, <laughs> that he will somehow misjudge the entrepreneur and invest in a consummate researcher uh, rather than an entrepreneur who wants to develop a product. Uh, the research entrepreneur will spend millions researching and developing new product variations of the existing product. Uh, the venture capitalist wants an entrepreneur who can make the transition into a marketing and production company that is trying to make money. Um, when we look at patents and trademarks, uh, describe in detail any patents or trademarks held by the company or ones it intends to apply for. Uh, you can describe why a patent has been granted in order to emphasize the product's uniqueness. Uh, at some point in the process, uh, you may want to give the venture capitalist a copy of your patent so he can uh, read it and determine for himself why you have a unique patent or trademark. Uh, you should not put a copy of the trademark in the business plan unless it is a key to describing uh, the uniqueness. Uh, describe any litigation the company may be involved in, including suits against the company and those the company has filed against others. Uh, be sure to mention any potential litigation that may be uh, contemplated. Uh, venture capitalists are litigation shy. Uh, they don't like going into courts for, for lawsuits. If they find that a company has been involved in a great deal of litigation, they are apt to turn down the request for funds. Uh, after all, if everybody is suing you, there must be something wrong with the way you operate uh, your company. Uh, on the other hand, if you are the type who sues others at the at the drop of a hat. There must also be something wrong. The venture capitalist will have every reason to wonder whether you will end up suing him very soon after he has made his investment. Um, a company with a history of litigation uh, will have to explain the details of the venture capitalist, 
uh, let me repeat that. A company with a history of litigation will have to explain the details to the venture capitalist in order to help him overcome his natural reserva reservation about companies with such a background. Describe the governmental agency that regulates the company and describe the relationship with the government. Uh, most venture capitalists can tell stories about excruciating experiences uh, with government agencies uh, that had one of their portfolio companies tied up in red tape for months or even years and which in some cases destroyed the company. If your business comes under a great deal of a governmental regulation, you will have to use extra persuasion to convince venture capitalists that you know how to operate in a regulated environment. Uh, which you should describe any potential conflicts of interest, uh, such as a director who is also the owner of one of your supplier or director or owner of any other companies in similar business businesses. Uh, describe any transactions uh, with the management in which it has sold something to the company for a price that may or may not be reasonable. Uh, if you do not reveal conflicts of interest and the venture capitalist uncovers them, you lose credibility instantly. It is better to meet this problem head on and reveal it to the venture capitalist at the outset. Show, show how the company is better off by being involved in a potentially conflicting situation than it would be otherwise. In this section, you should also mention whether it is a stock company, a partnership. Uh, tell where the company is incorporated, uh, where it is licensed to do business, and what trade name it uses. Uh, you should mention if it is a parent company with a subsidiary, if it is a complex situation in which a parent owns part of or all subsidiaries. Uh, use block diagrams to show the separate legal entities and draw lines between them with percentages on them. In terms of insurance, list the insurance carried by the company or intended to be carried by the company, including fire, uh, cause, uh, product liability, flood insurance, life insurance on key employees, and so on. However, list only the insurance that is important to the operation of the company, uh, not health insurance or the like. Uh, in terms of ta taxes, uh, mention any specific taxes that are levied against the company. If you are already in business, mention any outstanding taxes such as payroll taxes, uh, income tax. Um, as a point of information, uh, the venture capitalist may be interested in trade associations for your industry. Um, they may also want to know which trade magazines and trade newspapers are good ones so that he can read the previous issues to learn more about your business. In terms of the illustrative information, uh, you should include pictures of the product and the literature about the company that will show off your product or service. Uh, written descriptions and the business proposal are essential but pictures will also help sell your proposal. A general article about the industry or about uh, competitive products compared to your product is a useful addition. Uh, newspaper articles or magazine pieces on the company are probably unnecessary and do not say much to a venture capitalist. It is advisable to leave them out. Uh, sending along tapes, records, or other promotional audiovisual items is also a waste of money and time and it doesn't really make any sense to do that. Uh, in this section, you should describe the management, the directors, and all others who are key to the operation of, of this business. Uh, usually, there are no more than three key people in a very small firm and fewer than six in a larger one. Uh, remember, the venture capitalist is looking for key people. You should refrain from using superlatives uh, to describe the key people, but do not be shy about mentioning their achievements. In terms of your directors and officers, uh, list all the officers, directors, and key employees. You should include the full name of each individual, his or her position and age. Uh, in terms of key employees, you should identify the three or four individuals who are key employees and give a summary in resume style of their background and where they have worked. Uh, it is important to demonstrate that these key people are achievers. Uh, you must present um, yourself as an achiever to the venture capitalist or you probably will not be financed. Uh, the more you have achieved in your industry, the more the venture capitalist will be motivated to finance your company. In terms of consultants, mention the names of your consultants if any of your, uh, if, if any, uh, your accountants, your lawyers and bankers along with their telephone numbers. 
if a special fee is being paid to any of them or if any of them are on a monthly retainer fee by the company mention it in this section in terms of management fidelity um, it is difficult to demonstrate your honesty on paper <laughs> uh, but a positive statement like the one that follows will uh, be a big plus and I quote uh, no member of the management team no director or any major investor in the company has ever been arrested convicted or charged in a material crime uh, no one has been bankrupt personally or has been associated with a bankrupt business of any kind personal credit reports will verify that all individuals have excellent credit ratings and have no overdue debt outstanding end quote this would be a great clause to put in your proposal in terms of conflicts of interest um, this item is listed uh, once again to make sure that any conflict of interest transactions that have transpired are revealed fully in this section you should reveal transactions that management has had with the company for example a director may have contributed services to the company and in return the director may have received stock or stock options in the company uh, in terms of stock options you should tabulate all stock options that are now outstanding uh, besides each person's name you should in indicate the number of shares that have been granted the average exercise uh, price uh, the number of shares that have been exercised uh, since the options were granted and the number of options still outstanding um, where options are outstanding to a corporation you may wish to uh, note why they are outstanding at this particular point in time in terms of the stock option plan in this section describe the general stock option plan that exists at the company and how many options uh, the plan has in it or will have in it at some date in the future uh, principal shareholders you have to make reference to them uh, in this section uh, you list in tabular form the name of the individual the amount of shares or beneficially or directly uh, all shares under option are uh, the percentage this ownership represents with regard to all the shares outstanding and the percentage of ownership that will exist after the shares have been ex exercised also indicate the price paid for the ownership uh, list in detail any employment agreements that the company has with any of the employees and state specifically what the arrangement is with each employee employment agreements are not appreciated by venture capitalists most often they are used to ensure that top management will not be fired and will continue to obtain a high salary if you have a legitimate reason for employment contracts stated in this section in terms of remunerations uh, list all key employees directors or officers who will receive any payment whatsoever uh, you should list in tabular form the names of the individuals the capacity in which they will be serving and the salary or remuneration that they have received or propose to receive under the heading of remuneration you should include all fees, director's fees, consulting fees, commissions, bonuses, salary, and so on. In other words, total remuneration by your company. In terms of financing or first in proposed financing, uh, you should describe the common stock, preferred stock, or convertible uh, debentures. Uh, whatever it is you are trying to sell to the venture capitalist, be sure to provide enough details so that there will be no question about what you are selling. In terms of common stock, if you're selling common stock, one, will there be a, a dividend on the common stock? Two, will the dividend be cumulative in case you miss it? Three, will redemption of the common stock be required after a period of time in order to give the investor his money back? Four, what price will the investor pay for the common stock? Five, will there be restrictions on the shares? Six, what voting rights will holders of common stock have? Seven, what registration rights and will holders of common stock have? Eight, can the venture capitalist take you for a public listing? In terms of preferred stock, uh, if you're selling preferred stock, one, what dividend will you pay? Two, uh, what uh, will the dividend be cumulative, meaning that in case you do not pay, it for it one year or one quarter then you must make it up in some other year or quarter 
uh, three, what redemption will there be of the preferred stock? For example, after five years, will you have to begin redeeming the stock over a number of years to give the investors money back? Uh, four, is the preferred stock convertible into common stock? If so, what is the con conversion price? Uh, five, what restrictions are there on these shares and does the preferred stock have voting rights? Does it control the board of directors? What preferential treatment will it have? If you're dealing with convertible debentures, uh, if you're proposing convertible debentures, I should say, uh, one, are they for five years or ten years? Two, will there be an interest only period? Three, what interest rate are you seeking? Four, will the interest rate be variable or fixed? And five, will the loan be convertible uh, into common stock or preferred stock? If you are flexible as to the type of financing or the terms of the financing, state your willingness to negotiate in this section. In terms of the capital structure, uh, here you should uh, describe uh, the common stock, preferred stock, and long-term debt that is currently outstanding so that the venture capitalist will know the general capital structure of the company. In terms of collateral for the financing, obviously, if common stock is involved, there is no collateral. If the financing is to be subordinated debt, list the debts that will be senior to this debt. Explain what will be used to make this debt collateral. In terms of guarantees, uh, here you would indicate uh, the personal or corporate guarantees that will be given to the venture capitalist for his investment. If there is to be a personal guarantee, you will be required to supply a personal financial statement on the guarantors. In terms of conditions, uh, describe any conditions of the financing. For example, must the company provide a seat on the board of directors for the venture capital uh, company's representative? Uh, will the company have to live by any ratios? Uh, what milestones must the company achieve? In terms of reporting, describe what reporting you, you intend to make to the investor with regard to this financing. For example, will you provide a monthly profit and loss statement? a balance sheet, and an annual audit. In terms of use of the proceeds, specify where you intend to apply the funds. Do not use the, uh, the broad uh, title that so many people love, which is working capital, uh, but specify how the funds will be spent. Be as specific as possible. In terms of ownership, indicate the number of shares outstanding by each shareholder and the number that would be owned by the venture firm if this financing occurs. Indicate the amount paid will be paid for the ownership and the percentage of ownership each shareholder will have uh, of the company. If the, promoter sharehold, if the promoter shareholders have received or will receive shares other than for cash, give full details such as in consideration of what shares were received, that is for land, buildings or machinery supply, uh, promoter shares, etc and the current market value um, of these assets provided. Uh, as we move into looking at dilution, uh, you must describe the degree to which the new investor is diluted in terms of book value. Uh, fees paid, uh, in this section, uh, you should indicate whether you uh, pay fees to the consultant and whether you have paid the legal fees of the closing the investment. Uh, in terms of investor involvement, venture capitalists um, want to have the right to attend board meetings and to become a member of the board of directors. Uh, they may want one or two board positions. Uh, describe the amount of investor involvement that you are seeking or would like to have from the venture capitalists. Uh, there may be other opportunities for the venture capital firm to offer services to your small company. Uh, you may want to uh, the venture capital firm to provide you with assistance in the area of finance and may offer to pay a fee for this assistance. Uh, you could require a particular type of financing and may offer the venture capitalist a fee for a private placement, for example, 2% of the amount being placed. In terms of your financial statements, uh, this is not a section so much as it is a collection of supporting documents. Uh, it should consist of complete financial statements. Uh, if independent auditors do not certify your financials, an independent auditing company should review them. 
uh, you should have a consolidated balance sheet, uh, statement of income, statement of shareholders equity, and statement of changes in financial position. Uh, you should add appropriate notes of explanation to the financial statements. Uh, this exhibit uh, should include the last several years of financial statements as well as current financial statements uh, that may, may or may not be audited by an accounting firm. Uh, these should be, all be attached as exhibit number one financial statements and your business proposal should mention these exhibits. If you are to demonstrate that you are operating a stable business, you should present its current financial statements. How can anyone make a decision to invest in a company on the basis of financial statements that are history? Describe <clears throat> the major risk that an investor will have by investing in your company. This section spells out all the drawbacks. Do not offer positive comments except at the end of each paragraph. Some areas you mish, may wish to uh, cover are as follows. Uh, you want to cover limited operating history. If the company is new or has recently been organized, then the lack of operating history will be a significant item to discuss. Uh, you want to discuss uh, limited resources. Uh, the company may or may not have enough resources to continue operations uh, for a prolonged period of time. If everything does not work out as planned, mention this as a potential risk. Uh, in terms of limited experience, if management is young or new to the industry, you may need to discuss the experience level of management. Also, you will want to describe the market uncertainties that exist with regard to sales. In terms of production uncertainties, describe any production uncertainties that may exist. Perhaps a prototype has never been built on a production assembly line, and therefore there are some uncertainties as to whether it can be built. Uh, in terms of liquidation, uh, here you should present a liquidation analysis of your company. That is, if the company were to get an, in trouble and, and had to be liquidated, what might it be worth uh, on the auction block? Uh, in terms of dependence of key management, uh, you need to explain either on paper or directly to the venture capitalist later uh, what changes you expect when any of the key managers die. Who will step into their place? Who could be designated to run the company if the top person died? If you do not cover the subject here, you can expect the venture capitalist to ask you the favorite question. What happens if you are run over by a truck tomorrow? Some entrepreneurs write a corporate will. In it, they describe what is to be done with the company when they die. What could go wrong? <laughs> here the venture capitalist warn you uh, to put on his hat and try to look at the business as an investment. He expects you to address the question, what could go wrong? Uh, the related uh, question to answer here is how could the venture capitalist lose his money? In other words, the venture capitalist wants you to use your objective analytical skills to analyze your own business situation. He wants you to point them out and you must indicate how you are going to solve them. Uh, other items uh, you should mention uh, uh, such items such as your estimated uh, financial reserves, uh, the lack of a public market for the shares, uh, economic controls or other government regulations. Uh, you want to mention uh, control of the company by non-investor stockholders and the lack of dividends. Uh, please don't forget these items. If they are material rather than wait for the venture capitalist to bring them up, you should bring them up. Uh, discuss how the venture capital investor will eventually receive cash for his investment in the company. Uh, remember, the venture capitalist wants to end up with all cash and no investment in your company. There are three generally accepted methods of giving venture capitalists liquidity. Uh, you should cover all three in indicating which one is the most likely exit for your investor. Uh, the first one would be a public offering. Uh, the, this this is a pub, uh, public offering um, is the company could go public by offering its shares to the public. Uh, part of the shares or all of the shares owned by the venture capitalists would be sold in the public offering. Second option, uh, second the company could be sold to a large company, usually a conglomerate. Uh, in the case of uh, this option, you should actually mention some uh, conglomerates or large companies that you believe would have an interest in acquiring your company. Uh, thirdly would be the buyback. Uh, finally, um, 
you may offer the venture capitalist a, a put according to which your company uh, will be required to buy the equity owned by the venture capitalist on the basis of a predetermined formula. In terms of the ROI or the return on, on investment, uh, this will be more important to the venture capitalist than anything else. Uh, you need to show what return he can expect if he invests the amount you're requesting. For example, uh, you could say uh, if you buy 30% of the company for $300,000, after four years the company is a public company with a pre-tax earning of $3 million, then $3 million times a price earnings multiple of eight for our particular industry is $24 million as a value for the company. Uh, take 30% of that and you have $7.2 million for a $300,000 investment. Assume that the 30% is sold after four years, then the return on investment is $7.2 million divided by $300,000 uh, divided by four years, which is a return on investment of 400% per year. Here you should present your own analysis of the company's prior operating history, as well as projections for the future. The general section. In the general section, uh, you need to start out with some general profit and loss information, which will be based on financial data from your company. For example, for the last three years and for the next three years in the future, take net revenues, cost of sales, operating expenses, uh, interest expense, and income. Uh, project them forward and give historical information for them so that one can see a glance where the company has been and where it is going. In terms of the ratio analysis in this section, you should take the net revenue, cost of sale, operating expenses, interest expenses, and net income and compute them as percentages. That is, use 100% uh, for net sales, then calculate cost of sales as a percentage of sales, and so on. Uh, place these percentages in a column, uh, column form so that one can see the percentage ratio, for example, um, uh, as laid out uh, by the prior year actual, the last year actual, this projected year, next year projected, and in two year projections, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other area that you want to pay attention to is uh, the results of the operation. Uh, discuss the results of the operation and projections, but here it is financial conditions, uh, financial projections. Give your investors as much uh, detailed information as possible. Uh, once you presented a strong uh, uh, financial forecast and it shows to be accurate, you can rest assured that your investors will work with you. Uh, these are just, uh, this is a basic backdrop um, uh, venture capital funding of general breakdown. Uh, this, I hope, uh, was of some help to you. Uh, we will be exploring this topic uh, further in more detail uh, later on down. Uh, this was just a, a introductory breakdown. Uh, if you need assistance in, in structuring your, your affairs or your company in terms of needing funding for angel investors, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in terms of needing funding from venture capitalists, uh, please feel free to give uh, Wilson and Roberts a call or take a look at what we're doing now uh, on our website, uh, wilsonandroberts.com. So uh, this is Doyle Roberts uh, signing out, uh, wishing you the best of success in your business endeavors and, and have fun getting that funding. Have a great day.